Ladies and gentlemen, our session is about to begin. Please have a nice seat. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Om Swastiastu and may peace be upon you. Welcome to Ballroom of Laboratory of Multidiscipline Pertamina Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science Universitas Indonesia. We are gathered here for the eighth seminar MIPA Talk Series Season 3 2022 with the team Genome Analysis in Bioinformatics and Multidisciplinary Field. I'm Azevanya Karolin Siringoringo from Mathematics Department as the master of ceremony of this event. On behalf of the organizing committee, we would like to extend our warmest appreciation for your presence today. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to inform you that among us here, we have the Honorable Dean of Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science Universitas Indonesia, Bapak Dede Juana, PhD. The Honorable Manager of Research and Community Service, Bapak Dr. Dipo Aldila, SSE, MSE, and the Honorable Head of Mathematics Department and Moderator of this event, Bapak Professor Alhadi Bustamam, PhD, and the Honorable All of Faculty Leaders. It is also a great honor for me to welcome the Honorable Keynote Speakers, Dr. Yuko Makita from Rikan, Japan, Professor Yoshiharu Yamamoto from Gifu University, Japan, and the research group of Satraps Project. Also, we welcome the honorable all heads of study programs and all lecturers of Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science, Universitas Indonesia. Last but not least, we welcome all distinguished students and participants, both offline and online of the eighth seminar MIPA Talk Series Season 3, 2022. Allow me to read the agenda of this seminar. First, we will have the opening remarks delivered by the Honorable Dean of Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science, Universitas Indonesia, Bapak Dede Juhana, PhD. Second, we will have photo session for all participants. Then we will have the topic of review by the moderator of this event, Bapak Professor Alhadi Bustaman, PhD. Fourth agenda is the first presentation by our honorable keynote speaker, Dr. Yuko Makita, and will be followed by question and answer session. Next is second presentation by our honorable keynote speaker, Professor Yoshiharu Yamamoto, and also followed by question and answer session. And closing will be the last agenda of this seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we are pleased to invite Bapak Dede Johanna, PhD, Dean of Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science, Universitas Indonesia, to deliver the opening remarks. To Bapak Dede Johanna, the stage is yours.
sorry. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Okay. Nice to meet you. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Okay. Uh, thank you, Your uh, Excellencies, Honorable Speaker, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. Okay. It's very good morning to all, and assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Please to all, let us to thank to Subhanahu wa Taala, God Almighty, who have given His grace and guidance to so we are able to conduct the participant in seminar Mipa Talk, yeah, series in Ek, yeah, 2022 through Department of Mathematics in collaboration with the Satrap project. The theme of this great event is. Genome analysis is bioinformatic and multidisciplinary field. Yeah, I would like to start the expressing to my great gratitude to our honorable speaker, uh, Dr. Yuko Makita okay, from Rikang, Japan, and also Professor by the Institute of Technology. Okay, nice to meet you. And Professor Yoshiharu Yamamoto from Gifu University. And also from Minami, yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. we also thanks to the Department of Mathematics and Data Science Center, DC, Professor Al Hadi, and also uh, Satra for their support and collaboration for this event. Let me take this opportunity, opportunity to once again welcome to our guests and participants, especially lecturer and student in the MIPAUI. We hope this seminar will provide the meaningful platform to all us to share perspective on the how sustainability enhance our academic and regional connectivity and unlock great potential collaboration in our region, especially in the field bioinformatics. I believe that seminar will be highlight the source of innovative idea, concept, and breakthrough in development of genome analysis in the future, especially in the field bioinformatics and multidisciplinary. This event also be remarked the step stone to initiate it and process our future collaboration with Rikan and Gifu University. I especially thank to organize committee for the hard work, uh, perseverance and patience in preparing organizing this seminar so that can also go well, smoothly and successful. Okay, finally to this seminar, let us extend the network and call a cooperation among the all stakeholder in bioinformatics especially in Indonesia and world in general we hope the many great event and future collaboration with will help in the new future will support and contribution of various parties i wish you all very successful seminar thank you very much okay. Thank you, Bapak Dede Johanna, for the wonderful remarks. Now, we will do the photo session. First photo session will be for all faculty leaders and keynote speakers. For the honorable faculty leaders and keynote speakers, please stand in front of the stage to take a picture. Okay. 
After this, uh, all participants are welcome to take pictures with faculty leaders and speakers as well. For online participants, please turn on your camera. Thank you all for your cooperation in photo session. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, we enter the main session of this seminar. Please welcome our moderator, Professor Al Hadi Bustamam, PhD. For Bapak Professor Al Hadi Bustamam, please proceed to the stage. Oke, okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning uh, for uh, all of the participant in this uh, MIPA talk series. And we are very thanks to Allah yeah, for this uh, opportunity to meet again. And especially we have now a special uh, Honorable speaker from uh, Japan, yeah. especially from American, and also from uh, Gifu University. For the first talk, we will invite uh, Dr. Yuko Makita. Uh, he is, she is uh, uh, from American. Uh, She's her background, uh, uh, PhD in technology at Nagoya University and postdoctoral at Institute of Pasteur in France. Uh, she is uh, now as a researcher in RIKEN and also as a professor of Maibasi Institute of Technology. Dr. Yuko Makita uh, is working in uh, bioinformatics, I think, She is a biologist working with <laughs> bioinformatics. Yeah. Uh, it is very uh, interesting, I think, because uh, from uh, our our department, we are a mathematician and computer scientist working with uh, bioinformatics. Uh, and now we have different perspective. I think it is a good opportunity for us and also from Prof. Yoshi Haru as well. And Uh, Dr. Yukoma Kita working uh, in this 
time, he will talk about photosynthetic organism, uh, which is a uh, uh, use utilize yeah photosynthetic organis organism utilize various uh, wave like wavelength of light, yeah wave wavelength of light, not only as a source of energy but also as a clues to assess their environmental condition. So I think it is a, a nice uh, uh, subject we will uh, uh, get today because uh, there are various lights and then some of the lights is very interesting. Without uh, Ju, we will invite Dr. Yuko uh, for uh, her presentation. Yeah, please welcome. Thank you very much. Is it okay? Thank you very much for the great introduction, Mr. Chairman. So today, so I would like to introduce. Uh, so also, thank you very much for Dr. Aretano to organize this nice. Ah, uh, uh, sorry. So thank you very much for giving me a great opportunity. I'm really surprised with this. <laughs> situation. So thank you very much. <laughs> ah, okay. So today I'm going to introduce about the genome analysis in bioinformatics and multidisciplinary field. So I so right now I'm mainly working on the uh, uh, sequencing. So when I first studied genomics and molecular biology in the high school, the last of the high school, at that time I'm very much so impressed. So all organisms, so genetic code is written by only four characters, the ATGC, as you know. So I'm still interested in that decoding, that very much interest. Still, I'm working on the like, genomic sequence. So today I'd like to introduce some of my recent works. Hope you can enjoy my talk. So can you go to the next? So I'm right now, so self interaction. So right, I use I once worked in the at Riken as a researcher at Professor Minami Matsui's laboratory at Riken. But so from this able, I moved to the Maibashi Institute of Technology as a professor. So now, so my major is bioinformatics, and as he explained, so I am working on the mainly biology and using the informatics technology. But right now I am becoming a professor of the informatics department. So now I'm teaching the informatics, the machine learning and deep learning and such things. So can you go? So let me introduce my new university, my Institute of Technology. So it has uh, only one department and six divisions. So three divisions are related to architecture and three are related to life science. So compared with UI, it's a very small university. So after, so yesterday I arrived to UI, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with this largeness and activities. So I'm so impressed with the UI. So today, I briefly introduced the satellite project that what I'm doing in that project. And also, so since I already introduced my recent work in the two months ago, even the UI, UI member. So this time I will introduce another part of my work. So it's related to the metagenome data. So brief, so sorry, so it's a two unrelated research work I presented, but both of them are using a genomic sequencing. So first, I direct in, I mean, so let me introduce the, oh, can I go? Okay, so, ah, okay. So, so, in six years ago, we in the laboratory, Minami's laboratory, we announced the draft genome of heavier Brazilian ensis, Palalaba tree. So at that 
time. So, so this is a pretty short result of this. So at the time we see against the almost 1.5 gigabase of the genome site. So next please, I think you. Yeah, and uh, at that time, so we basically see, obtained the sequence with NGS sequencer, which means very short lengths. So based on the Illumina sequencer, it generate only five, uh, 150 base pair. So also we use the pack by your data. So at that time they generated several thousand base pair, several K base pair. So even the longer sequence at that time, so still very short compared with the chromosome level. So although we successfully annotated the genomic gene coding regions, so that's why we could successfully publish paper. But so if we consider about the chromosome sequence, so every sequence are very fragmented. So, so in that case, so we know the genetic uh, so CDS region, but some of, um, some of the time, so we don't know the promoter region. So then if we don't have the promoter region sequence, then we are not so sure about the regulation. So we, after the publication, we are still working on the improvement of the genome. So we applied high C technology, which captures a chromosome 3D structure. So as you can see, using a linker proteins, it, it captures a chromosome sequencing related to next to each other like this, then digested using a restriction enzyme, then, then again continued as those sequencing. So from this technology, so basically we know the chromosome connecting point. So in a single sequencing, we are not sure which part is related or not. But so if we use this high C technology, we know 3D structurally activated in the other region of the genome. So we capture this sequence, but this technology is basically to, at the beginning, so they, plan to use uh, this technology to the regulation mechanism to, to know. But so later we noticed, so this uh, we uh, so people noticed, so this technology applicable for the assembly of the genome. So we have the very fragmented DNA, but using this technology, we can make the longer sequencing. So since if the, if the two, two fragmented DNA, the, connected to by high C method, thing, which means highly, those are uh, highly in the same chromosome. Such information was analyzed by the algorithm. Then we obtained, so now we obtained 18 shoot chromosome legs. So, should, so it's not a complete chromosome, but very close to the complete complete chromosome. So these small rectangles that there are 18 should chromosome. Also, we have still the list of the sequence here, but even so, so, so now finally we obtained chromosome level longer sequencing. So which means we have the fundam so basic, basic line of the molecular biology. So genome support, uh, so various researchers. So we provided this data. So, so, high, so in, by now, there are four publications related to heavier brazilianesis, so different crowns. So highlighted read this one is our result in, nine, in 2016. And this one is our new genome data, updated one. So in, in the basically, so compared with our previous publication, so we connected the sequence on average thousand times better. So based on our genome sequence, also we, we obtained RNA data, also cage data, which represent the transcription start site using NGS sequencing technology. So we now constructed a database, Rava genome and transcription database at Recan. 
So using these fundamental genome sequence and transcriptome data, now in the Satrep's project, I am involved in to predict the predict the phenotypic phenotypic data using the genome sequencing. So if we obtain the genome sequence from one clone, specific clone or F1 progenies, then sequence them and predict so so this tree will be uh, how much of the latex yield or resistance of the each each diseases. So such prediction model I'm trying to construct. So this is a basic idea. So right now I, we are collaborating with the ED and UI also, but so data is come from ED, Indonesian Lab Research Institute, located to Sembawa, Sembawa. So they already have the some huge pyrogenic tree of each clone. So also generating a new clone. So we obtained such genomic genomic sequencing of the each clones, also that F1 progenies. And so at ED, ED researcher are, of course, they are measuring the phenotypic data, so such as latex yield or resistance degree, and such things. So combining those two data, I'm trying to construct a model. So data example is like this. So phenotypic data of the each tree is so, for example, latex yield is can be a numeric number, but so disease resistance will be a categorized number. So one to five, or so very high sensitive or resistance. So also compare with genetic data, which means basically focusing on a SNP marker. Then, so we know we will estimate which part of the SNP affect to the phenotypic data. Such model. I'm trying to construct. So using the phenotypic data, genetic data, we will, right now I'm working on this part. So, so still collecting the data right now. So, so, so if we can successfully construct a prediction model, then later, and if the ELE member newly try to construct, uh, to make a new clone, so they, of course, so A clone and the B clone that make a F1 progenies, but they are not at that. So normally, so they are not sure which which child will be the elite clone. So you, so then we sequence them in a very small stage. Then we will utilize this model and predict which which trees will be the better clones. So then we will so only focus on the elite clone. So that is uh, what I'm doing at Satrip's project. Okay. And so this one is uh, my rest, uh, last year, the uh, publication of the last year. year. So, so which is not in related to the laboratory, but so still very, I'm also interested in the metagenomic data. So let me introduce this work too. So metagenomic data, so maybe as you know, metagenomic data, Okay, good. So we uh, we have a we had a collaboration chance to utilize the marine metagenome data. So they have they already have the marine metagenome huge data set of data, and discussed with uh, Dr. Minami. So can you utilize uh, our data? So or something. Then so since since Dr. Minami is a is a specialist for the photo bio uh, photo photoreceptors. So we focused on to, so we are interested to find new photoreceptor in the marine organisms. So metagenome sequence contains the unknown, unknown microorganism data a lot. So we expect it, we can find something new from the sequencing. So at that time, the project was related to the Japan's big earthquake happened in 2011. So that's why, so it is a close to Fukuoka. So we, they sampled, they, after, after one year later of the earthquake, they start sampling the marine environment. So they sequenced them also together with the A-line the Hokkaido, near Hokkaido area, they sequenced, so, so they sequenced monthly. 
for two years. So we obtained those data. And as you may know, so, so if we focus on the light, light in the seawater, so blue light penetrates deeper than the red light. So maybe, so many of the bacteria, microorganisms, utilize blue light more than the red light to utilize something. So we expect that also blue light cryptochrome is a very close to the DNA. Uh, uh, so the historically very old proteins. So that's why so many of the species has the cryptochrome. So, but instead of the, uh, the but the red photoreceptor, so in a plant, so phytochrome is the most well, well studied protein, but phytochrome, some species does not have. So later it comes, but some species does 12. So since then we focus on the cryptochrome sequencing day at that time. So in the cryptochrome, they have the some domain structure is well studied. So for photoreas, it's very close to DNA photoreas. So, so DNA fixing the enzyme. So, so those, so we looked for the, the those domain in the marine, marine environment data. So then, so if we find this, those three, uh, three domain, domain sequencing, but which are not registered in the NCBI, so can be our new candidate. But still, unfortunately, there are many of the sequencing we detected, but most of them are very close to cryptochrome, but we are not so sure about, we can say it's new. So of course it's new genome sequencing, not registered in CBI, but not so interesting enough. So then we focused on the, we focused on the, the DNA photo, DNA, uh, DNA cryptochrome, together with other functional domains. So there are several com competition, combinations. So this so has a cryptochrome, crypto, uh, uh, oh, uh, I can go this one. Thank you. Sorry. Now I know, sorry, <laughs> how to use. So, so DNA, uh, then can I go this one? Thank you. Then, sorry. Okay, so then, so we found some of, uh, we, so we found some uh, cryptochrome domains together with, uh, for example, so other functional domains, so DNA, DNA binding domain, or this, there are several ones. But so interestingly, we also found, so one is choose, uh, so C terminal is a cryptochrome, and in the terminal, they, uh, one protein has a phytochrome which is a red light photoreceptor. So we expected, so one part is recognized red light and another part recognized blue light. It can be very fascinating for us. So we keep working, we decided to focusing on this protein. But at that time, so also this is a marine metagenome data. It can be a, just a assembling error, computation error, just mistake by mistake combines to sequencing together. So we expect we also afflate that situation, but fortunately it was true. So first we checked out the PCL and it detected, five, detected this length long. So it has a two protein, so it can be a very long, over 500, 5K base pair. So we detected by RT PCL. So then now, so we know the gene is actually exist in the sea, but we don't know the host organism because it can be anything. So because we obtained this sequence from the metagenomic data. So then we utilize the MMETSP project data. So in a European group, so they sequence, they took the RNA sequence of over at that time, 300 of microorganisms, but right now they already released over one, uh, over 800 of the of, of RNA-seq data. So project is Mali Microbial Eukaryote Transcriptome Sequencing Project. So we downloaded all of their data and mapped to our genome. 
first of all, I expected cross species can be detected from this project. But fortunately, partly we matched the sequence 100%. So, but from their transcriptome data, they are fragmented also very partly, partly fragmented data. So from that, their transcriptome data, they are not considerable. Those fragments are continue to the, into one gene. But so opposite is possible. So then using their data, we find out this organism is a Pycnococcus prosory. It's a unicellular green algae. And, and belong to the rationophyte. Oh, sorry. Ah, oh, sorry. Go to next. So then now we know the host organism and proteins exist in the host organism, Pycnococcus. So we collaborate with uh, Dr. Narika, Narikawa at that time, she's the uni uh, Shizuoka University. So he measured actually this protein has function to absorb the light or not. So he successfully found out this part of the protein. So in the plant, normally, so it absorbs red light. But in this species, in this sequence, so he found out a little bit of blue shifted orange light is a peak of the absorbance. So the bottom ones are normalized data. And also blue light location, so it absorbs the blue light. So now we know this protein actually has function to absorb the light. So then, of course, as you imagine, so we try to make a knockout strain to know the actual function in the organism. But unfortunately, it has a very hard shell outside of the layer. So we couldn't make, We still we are continue to working on, but we've not succeeded to make a transformation so knockout strains. So that's why we focus on, we are doing that. We can, we did what we can do. So one project is to determine the genome sequence. So since the genome size is relatively small compared with the lava, it's very small. It's easier to finish up the sequencing. So we did, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. So, uh, so this organism has 43 chromosome. And so, so we assembled successfully. And though, so, so we sequence a genome because not, so not only because of the, what we can do. So, so genome sequence can only answer our question. Is there as a white chrome or cryptochrome gene in the genome or not? So transcriptome data, data can assist some of the question, some of the answer. But so we are not sure transcriptome it can express only a certain environment. Without the genome, we cannot truly answer for this question. So we worked on the genome. Oh, sorry, I'm not good at it. Then, so we found out there is no phytochrome except for the, this few chimeric proteins. Also, there are five cryptochromes this organism has. So if the blue, so if the blue light recognizes this organism, then we are not sure which cryptochrome they used. But if we focus on the orange light, so which means so since there is no other phytochromes in the species, so so it represents that this fused protein works in the organism. So also after the after deciding the genome sequence, we noticed that so this organism has fragile genes. So but so in the so but that in the biologist doesn't know it has a fragile stage. But from the genome, so we can we know so it will make some under the sun circumstances they can make uh, this fragile stage. So then, so to check that this gene is working on the species and how, how work in the species, we what we do is RNA seq. So under the monochromatic light, so blue light, violet light, blue, so so a blue a orange light. So this these data are compared that differential expressed genes compared with the under the dark condition. So then, so first we tried 
the obtained RNA seq data, then many of the gene are differentially expressed under the orange light. So we are so excited. So, which means so maybe our Duke protein worked. But so when we uh, we tried to submit a paper, the re reviewer mentioned, so it might be a side effect of the photosynthesis. So of course, photosynthesis utilizes a red light and various curved light. So it, uh, it may be a side effect. So to avoid the photosynthetic effectivity, we use the DCMU is a photosynthetic inhibitor. So replace the photosynthetics and check the gene, mean gene, ex, gene expression. So then still then, of course, the number of the gene is widely reduced, but still 400 of them are seeking, are, are differentially expressed. So now focusing on the, what of the genes are, are regulated under the Duke gene. So one of the typical one is, is regulated uh, LHCP. So as you know, there are LHCA and LHCP, and, uh, and the LHCP is a plasmophyte specific one, like harvesting complex of the gene. So, but still, so com so compare with uh, with the, with this amino like in, uh, photosynthetic inhibitor and without the with light photosynthetic inhibitor the expression is reduced. A little bit, but so is so. But come to is EL, I, so, so, ellipse, ellipse. So early, uh, early light inducing protein, which Dr. Yamamoto knows very better, <laughs> knows well. I heard. So this gene is regulated, uh, so highly expressed under the orange light or blue light of with uh, so suppressing the photosynthetic photosynthetic uh, using a DCM, DCMU. So we expect so those genes can be a can be a, a these genes are candidate of the regulator using a, our finding new genes. So this is a summary of of the lab. so those are member are uh, so those are Minami's laboratory member. Also, those uh, those five people are contribute uh, were collaborated with this Duke project. So we successfully find out a new gene from the metagenomic data, and so which we can successfully show the Duke one absorb orange and far red and blue light. And from the genomic data and RNA seq data, we suggested so and so and suggested some of the function biological function in the paper. So now, so we are continuing to create a knockout knockout strain still working on. Thank you very much. Thank you for Dr. Yuko Magita for the very uh, inspired uh, presentation. Yeah. Please. Uh, now we have the question and answer uh, session. Yeah. I think uh, this is topic is very hard <laughs> for me uh, from a mathematician. Yeah, but I think it's very interesting. Yeah, because uh, we can see in your presentation that there are very interesting uh, uh, creatures in nature. <laughs> so why uh, you get uh, many publications in nature as well? <laughs> Maybe any questions from Bu Retno, I think, from biologists? <laughs> yeah. Ada itu nggak? Mike, tolong mic nya. Please introduce yourself first. Hello. Uh, um, before I start, perhaps I want to say thank you for the uh, interesting presentation. I really loved how to explain it because it seems 
you seems very um delighted to show what he just um uh <laughs> experimented i'm sorry because my english is not pretty good but um what i'm going to say is uh oh before my name is prince alipin and i'm from uh biology um so before you have explained to us that uh there are findings of flagell gene is that correct yeah okay um is that um in uh yeah is that affecting how the gene is evolving i mean uh the change like the fusion gene happened is that like for example because there is flagell gene and flagell stages that if the species may come to the uh, surface and then go back to the uh, darker sea uh, i think that's all <laughs> thank you so much i hope you can understand my question thank you Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the. Thank you very much for the good question. So, fragile as for the pro, fragile proteins. So, we fortunately found from the genome. So then, microbe writer is working on that that species. Then he looking for the what stage, how do they make the fragile? So successfully, he found out the condition. So if he, if he mixed with the bacteria affected to the, this species then so that species started to make a fragile in the last stage with cyclic and maybe try to escape we get that is out right now so maybe so he is preparing a publish his result maybe coming soon i think thank you thank you Michael. We invite another question. Is that another question? Yeah, please. Uh, thank you so much for uh, this uh, occasion. Uh, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, Al Hadi and uh, Dr. Yuka Makita for this amazing presentation that has been delivered. Uh, my name is Alberto Salda. I'm from the Department of Chemistry, University Universitas Indonesia. Uh, and I would like to ask uh, about uh, about us two questions. Uh, I'm I, I'm interested about your raw data in because typically when you do uh, when you want to do whole genome sequencing, typically it will be done in NGS. And the typical raw data of this type use it. It typically sort of in small pieces, and then I would like to know how do you collect the data and then process it uh, so it will so we can get the genome of the so the so we can get the genomic uh, the, the the genomic data of the biosynthetic uh, protein that we that we desire, and then also I'm I'm personally interested in proteomics. Uh, and I know that cryptochrome is a flavin-based protein that can be that typically used for the magnetic sensors for a lot of species. And I would like to ask about: uh, Is it possible for this method uh, to uh, that uh, to be used for a later for a post translational modification of this protein in later years? I mean, like for in a typical species uh, in a typical species like this, is it? possible for evolution of this protein for later is to be discovered and still be modified and still be identified sorry thank you so first of all so from the genome sequence to identify protein modification it's be it will be a tough i think yeah <laughs> yeah so many of the protein has to be working on the regulation so from just the sequencing level, then only the genomic sequence is difficult. But so we can combine the other with other data based on the genome sequence. So I think it will be a basic line can make the genome sequence, but you need to add various data to the genome. 
and、uh, so sorry, what is the second question? Sorry, three. Ah, this is the the function、uh, evolution of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. So, the first thing, so we are interested in the evolution. Of,、uh, sorry, I didn't, I cut it、uh, that slide. But so, in the, so there are so, around over 10 species that g e n o m e is really related to that, this species. So, in the fight, 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 that's related to this species. So, there are around 15 species that g e n o m e is released. So, we checked. So, some of the gene has this gene. So, of course, they didn't have only the very close gene. So, feature is not generally determined, has that, this, the same duplicate as the same, same、uh, this fusion gene. But so, the evolutionally looking for the, for example, fight chrome. So, so, it's very interesting and difficult, I think. So, fight chrome gene is sometimes so, not this group that has a fight chrome, doesn't have. Not such clear case. So, some species h a s not have, some has, some are not have. So, so, this gene can be extracted easily. Originally, we guess, our guess is originally they have the, both set of the p h y t o c h r o m e and c r y p t o c h r o m e but many species are lacking right now. So, that is the current stage. Thank you. Okay,、uh, because we have、uh, limited time. Maybe from、uh, me, from the mathematician.、Uh, if you want to,、uh, be, to participate <laughs> in your project,、uh, could you uh, maybe, uh, uh, so as,、uh, maybe what's part of a mathematician or statistical uh, uh, researcher can、uh, do in your project? <laughs> Sasha can work on、uh, this project a lot, I think. So, just sometimes they don't have the common language with biologists and the mathematicians. <laughs> I feel they use a little bit slightly different language. But so, for example, s a t e l l i t e project, we have the hundreds of the genome sequence and we are collecting the phenotypic data to make a model. So, I'm、uh, not just using the, the, what other people develop. But so, it's not the best right now, I know. So, we, you can improve and detect,、uh, create a new method, methodology based on our data, and so, so many of the things I think I'm expecting. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Tiko, because、uh, we are also、uh, bring our students here from the Department of Mathematics, especially from my class, Bioinformatics. And、uh, I want to report to my, to,、uh, my dean that we have the a participant today. 42% percent、uh, uh, from offline and 170% uh, offline. So, total、uh, more than 200%、uh, pers- uh, pers- and there are、uh, come from、uh, many other universities,、yeah, including U- University of Indonesia,、uh, Universitas Hasanuddin, UEN Malang, Tadulako, UEN Sarif Dalai Jakarta, Universitas Islam Riau, Universitas Brawijaya. Uh, Akademik Manajemen Komputasi Petapang,、uh, Fakultas Farmasi, Universitas Gajah Mada, Universitas Sulawesi Barat, Mula Warman University, Universitas Lampung, BRIN, Universitas Andalas, Universitas Mal- Mula Warman, Universitas、Swah- Sahwala. So we have very broad、uh, audience.、Yeah. I think,、uh, thank you,、uh, Dr. Yuko, for the very nice presentation. And、uh, please give a big applause. Okay,、uh, we're now going to the, the next session. Yeah. Next session, we have uh, uh, Professor Yushi Haru Yeyamamoto. So, he is a f- very prominent、uh, professor from、uh, Gifu University.、Yeah. Professor Yushi Haru、uh, did his、uh, bachelor. Master and PhD for, uh, in uh, Kyoto University. And also, he is a fellow from uh, uh, various、uh, universities, like、uh, in Yale University in the Department of Biology, a fellow in Riken, and fellow as well in、uh, Nagoya University,、uh, and also、uh, 
he is now the full professor in Faculty of Applied Biological Science in Gifu University. He has a lot of uh, very interesting uh, publication. Very, I, I saw your Google Scholar and very very high impact <laughs> publication. So we are very uh, honored today. We get Professor Yoshiharu to present here, and we are very happy that uh, you uh, also uh, uh, facilitate facilitate uh, our uh, team to uh, like last year to have a PhD <laughs> scholarship and uh, maybe, maybe uh, we will continue as well uh, this year yeah, and the next year. Okay, uh, Professor Yoshiharu will present uh, about sequence-based evaluation of promoter, promoter context for prediction of transcription start site in Arabidopsis and rice. Uh, we have delay. Uh, please welcome Professor Yoshiharu. Okay, so, so, so thank you very much for the uh, um, very kind introduction. Eto, I. Uh, prepare the presentation for a uh, faculty of uh, no, uh, department of mathematics. So, so I chose a small uh, topic. So I have to apologize. Thank you. Uh, firstly, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, myself. Uh, I uh, studied uh, as an undergraduate student uh, biochemistry of uh, plants. And then uh, I studied uh, molecular biology and also uh, molecular genetics. So uh, essentially, uh, my education is a uh, botany. And I, I think I am a botanist. And, but in, when I was an uh, undergraduate student, I had uh, a lot of time. So, so after going to the, my graduate school, uh, I lost most of the free time, but the thing, I was an undergraduate student. No. Yeah, I had uh, a lot of time, so I uh, could play with uh, uh, my computer. So in this time, uh, I learned uh, basic um, Pascal. I think now nobody remember Pascal, but uh, I my second computer language was uh, Pascal. Then, uh, to fair, 2000, no, no, uh, to kono hen kana. 1997, I joined the uh, professor uh, Minami Matsui's laboratory. Uh, so it's a uh, genome science center. So th there, uh, I, I had to handle uh, a lot of data. So uh, I used a uh, uh, computer for uh, study again. <laughs> yeah, so that's here. And then now uh, my uh, major interest is a uh, plant promoter, so structure and function of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, uh, I'm using computer studies. <laughs> yeah, I'm mainly using uh, Power, but for my students, uh, I'm recommending to use uh, uh, Python. 
。えー違うな。えっと、こっちか。Okay, so promoter. Promoter is a、uh, locate in、uh, DNA. So, so,、uh, so CDS is a coding, protein coding sequence. And this、uh, encodes a、uh, amino acid sequence, blue one. So in front of this,、uh, there is a, a promoter and、uh, Uh, after the promoter, there is a transcription start site. So,、uh, shown in green. So, the、uh, so、promoter has information of、uh, direction of transcription and also strength of it. And also,、uh, it has information when it's expressed. So,、uh, so that's、uh, done using. Uh, so called core promoter region, it, it is believed to be necessary、uh, to have promoter activity. And also, red one is a、uh, regulatory、uh, sequence. Uh, so, so, red sequence、uh, encodes、uh, information of when, when、uh, and how much、uh, transcription is necessary. And to, And、uh, so, gray one, gray area has no function. And、uh, core promoter and、uh, to regulatory sequence,、uh, their positions are kind of、uh, flexible. So, so the promoter、uh, is not a rigid structure. So, it's, it's difficult to、uh, detect the structure.、Uh, でこれかなあ,あ違うな。こっちか。OK, so,、uh, so we know、uh, so called Tata box、uh, is、uh, found、uh, in all the eukaryotic promoters. So、uh, we used to think、uh, the Tata box is necessary for the promoter activity.、Uh, so. So, so, the question is that、uh, if、uh, all the promoters contain the,、uh, eh, the Tata box as a core element, so, that, so we found、uh, only 25% of our genome、uh, contains the Tata box. So, less than、uh, 75% of the promoters. Has no、uh, recognizable core promoter element. So that's one thing. So that's the、uh, situation when I started promoter studies in around 2006. So, next, so regulatory sequence. So, how many regulatory sequences are there in one plant genome? The answer、uh, nobody knows. So, there are several.、Uh, There are、uh, several entries in the databases, but that's not enough. So, we、uh, botanists、uh, have identified uh, through uh, extensive uh, experimental analysis to find one by one. So, to identify one、uh, regulatory sequence, we use like、uh, five years or so. so So, we don't have the whole、uh, sequences of the、uh, regulatory sequence. So, that was, a, that was a start point. So, then、uh, so we, I read one article of human promoters. So, this shows a, a regulatory sequence. So, there are several types are shown. So, this shows a position from a translational start site. So, so Translation starts from here to the downstream. This is the upstream region. So, as you can see,、uh, these、uh, regulatory sequences、uh, appear more in the proximal region to the、uh, translated site. So, I, after reading this article,、uh, I thought using this feature,、uh, maybe I can extract the uh, whole uh, regulatory sequence. So, the, 
Uh, so this is a, a strategy of uh, sequence extraction. So, these boxes are uh, short sequences, some different sequence uh, is shown in different color. So, uh, so blue one, blue sequence uh, appears in at the promoter region uh, with high frequency, uh, but there is no uh, uh, preferential uh, accumulation or distribution. So the distribution is uniform in this case. So this is not what uh, we want to uh, focus on. But the uh, green one has a preferential uh, distribution. So this type of sequence uh, were uh, extractive. So we uh, looked at uh, all the uh, eight base uh, octama sequences and checked uh, if uh, one sequence has uh, this type or this type uh, one by one. Then uh, after uh, extraction of a uh, localizing a sequence, uh, we uh, classified according to the uh, distributing positions in the promoter region. So this is a summary and there is a uh, preferential uh, accumulating sequencing. Uh, so different uh, sequence has a different uh, Accumulation profiles. <laughs> and so, so this methodology is called uh, local distribution of short sequence uh, LDSS. So, uh, uh, using this method, uh, we could uh, re identify the Tata box uh, and also uh, new uh, core promoter elements like a uh, GA element. So this was found only in the uh, plants, uh, life and Arabidopsis. And uh, interestingly, this sequence was not detected in mammals like mouse or human. Uh, instead, uh, mammalian promoters are reported to contain a so-called CPG type promoters. And, uh, our method uh, could detect uh, this uh, type, but uh, this uh, couldn't be found in plant promoters. Uh, so, so, uh, so in the uh, eukaryote, uh, there are uh, two types of core promoters. One is a Tata box type, uh, and the other is a GA or a CPG type. And one species has uh, at least two types of two types of uh, core promoters. And the uh, second type uh, is not conserved between plants and mammals. So this is an uh, interesting part. And also uh, using the same method. Uh, we could extract the uh, possible uh, regulatory sequencing sequences from uh, Arabidopsis and lice, uh, like 300 or 200 uh, sequences were identified. And some of them were reported uh, as a, a functional sequence for uh, a regulatory uh, function, but some are not reported, so they uh, would be a uh, novel uh, regulatory sequences. Mm. Yeah, in parallel, uh, we also uh, developed a uh, uh, methodology to uh, predict a uh, regulatory sequence using uh, gene expression data. And when we started this research, uh, there were uh, several estab established methodologies uh, for this purpose, uh, to, like give sampler or a meme. So they are uh, essentially uh, use uh, motif extraction in the positive sequence group. 
but uh, using these methods, uh, we couldn't get a good uh, data. So we had to develop by ourselves a new methodology. So our method is based on uh, frequency comparison between uh, positive data positive promoters and the total promoters. So as you can see, uh, the accuracy and also, I can see it. it, it sensitivity uh, was uh, better uh, in our method. Uh, so this is published in 2011, and uh, still I think this is the uh, best uh, methodology for uh, uh, regulatory sequence prediction uh, using the gene expression data. Okay, uh, so using the uh, prediction methodology, uh, we, we could have a, a, a lot of uh, publication. Uh, the green ones are our own uh, works and the others uh, are collaboration. So, so looking at this one, uh, we, we are like a, a helper uh, laboratory. That, that's okay. Uh, we are happy to do this. And also uh, extracted data was utilized to uh, make a database of promoters, uh, uh, it mainly are plant promoters. So this is plant promoter database, PPDB. So this is available through uh, internet. Okay, so uh, from here, uh, I'd like to introduce our recent work. Uh, this is a collaboration with uh, Professor Makita. It's a sequence-based evaluation of promoter context for uh, prediction of transcription start So we call this TSS in Arab Deficit and also LIES. Yeah. Uh, TSS uh, transcription start site data is utilized to for uh, promoter recognition. So uh, promoter elements are searched for using uh, this uh, position information. So TSS data is uh, very necessary for our work. But to, uh, to do this uh, experimental analysis uh, to identify the TSS uh, using uh, wet uh, experiments, uh, we do uh, like a TSS seq or a cage analysis. So this is a, a labor consuming work and it takes like two weeks and very complicated uh, processes are included and uh, this is uh, somewhat difficult to do. So not many laboratories can do this one. So uh, easier way is a computer prediction. So there are uh, uh, a few uh, methods reported uh, for this purpose. So one utilizes a, a core element data box for promoter search. Uh, this is an old methodology. And recently, there is a, a machine learning based prediction method using the uh, local uh, sequences around TSS. And so uh, we uh, we were not uh, satisfied uh, with sorry <laughs> we are, we were not satisfied with this methodology so uh, we uh, wanted to develop our own method for uh, prediction of TSS. Uh, uh, our goals is a development of a. Uh, uh, prediction methodology for uh, promoter position, which is uh, independent of the core element. So we uh, like to avoid using uh, information of the core elements because uh, uh, there is a heterogeneity in the core elements in one genome. So one genome contains uh, different core elements. 
And also, we also found a poor race type flow motor. So that's why uh, this uh, independence from the core element is required. Then it, the second goal is the establishment of a evaluation system uh, of the flow motor context. So this is a, a new concept, but uh, we believed uh, uh, th there is uh, such a, a phenomenon. Uh, the third goal is uh, uh, evaluation of uh, flow motor maturation. So this is also a new concept. So uh, this is a, a evolutionarily uh, stable promoters are mature promoters. <laughs> okay. So this is a, a distribution profiles of uh, two uh, simple sequences. And so so th these sequences uh, appear with very high frequency in the pro in the promoter region, and this is a TSS, and uh, this one uh, blue one A A A A A A A. So this uh, appears very highly uh, as a, a proximal promoter region. So compared with this region, the high high uh, accumulation. And then after TSS, the uh, uh, sequence is gone. And the complementary sequence uh, of uh, this is TTTTTTTT. So this also has high uh, uh, appearance in the promoter region, but uh, here there is some difference. And so because they are uh, complementary each other, uh, this difference means that. Uh, uh, strand bias. So this is a, a potential uh, to determine uh, direction of the uh, transcription start site. So we uh, had a hypothesis uh, that uh, uh, these uh, spacer sequences uh, constitute a promoter context. And uh, we want to measure the context uh, somehow. <laughs> and then, uh, so this is a methodology. So the proximal promoter region and the distal regions are monitored. And uh, uh, we uh, score uh, differential accumulation. So if uh, one sequence appears uh, higher here than here, uh, we have a higher, high score. So the score is called promoter index, uh, PRI. So each octama sequence has uh, one score. Okay. So after preparation of the score, uh, we can apply to the genomic sequence. Yeah, so, so, so th this is a long uh, DNA sequence and uh, we divide by uh, eight bases and one eight base has a uh, one score. So then uh, yeah, so we can uh, evaluate the uh, DNA region using the PRI score. So this is a uh, uh, average of all the promoters in uh, Arabidopsis genome. So this is a transcription start site and the high score appears in the proximal region of the promoter. Yeah. And the reverse strand has a, a lower, slightly lower score than the uh, forward uh, strand. And so, Arabidopsis uh, promoter prediction. <laughs> okay. And so this is a, a to genetic uh, several regions in, uh, regarding uh, gene structure. This is a promoter region and uh, the coding sequence and uh, this the UTR are uh, transcribed but the trans not translated regions uh, and also uh, to. T T T 
tRNA and microRNA are shown. So if you look at this uh, PRI, promoter index, uh, the uh, value is positive only in the uh, proximal region of the promoter. So the uh, upstream region of promoters has a negative value and only uh, proximal region has a positive score. So this uh, graph says uh, uh, this PRI uh, indexing uh, have a, a very specific uh, to the uh, proximal promoter region. Uh, so this is the average of uh, total promoters in Arab Dosis genome. Uh, transcription start site is here, and the highest score comes to the proximal promoter region. It, uh, you can see the strand bias uh, between four and reverse strands. So they, they are uh, expected features. So this is a scanning data of a genome, genomic region. So the bar uh, shows a gene, gene model. So there are uh, like five or 10 genes are shown in this uh, chromosomal uh, region. And the uh, it orange and blue ones are uh, shows direction of gene. So blue one uh, means a uh, gene uh, start from the left and go to right. And red, red gene model uh, means a uh, gene starts from right and goes to left. And triangle uh, means uh, ex experimentally identified TSS. Uh, th they are. Uh, actually our own uh, data. So the, the bottom graph, so this is a uh, PRI uh, indexing uh, information. The peaks are expected to have a uh, TSS around, around the peak. And uh, so this uh, square uh, lonesome uh, means uh, coincidence between the peak and the uh, experimentally identified TSS. So they are uh, so success in the uh, from TSS prediction. So I think uh, this has a very nice uh, signal to noise ratio. Uh, this is a, a summary of a prediction. So we are uh, made several groups of promoters into uh, core positive groups and core negative groups. And also, uh, to, uh, Tata positive and negative groups. And also, uh, to, yeah, and G GA is also uh, another uh, core promoter element. So, so uh, all the core elements are included here, uh, core plus. So, uh, so vertical axis shows a uh, success rate of uh, TSS prediction. So as you can see, uh, presence or absence of core elements uh, didn't uh, influence the results of prediction. So this means uh, our prediction uh, is not dependent on the uh, core promoter information. <laughs> so um, this graph shows a relationship uh, between expression level. So higher expression, uh, highly expressed promoters are here, and um, lowly expressed promoters are here. Uh, uh, all the promoters uh, have high uh, success rate of prediction, but uh, there is a positive relationship between the expression level and uh, prediction uh, success. <laughs> so uh, highly expressed uh, promoters have uh, more higher uh, prediction uh, results. And uh, I can speak the bottom. So 
uh, next uh, rice prediction data. So uh, in the case of rice, uh, specificity of the score is less than allowed of this, especially uh, it transcribed but not translated region also has a high score uh, in addition to the uh, proximal promoter region. So this is the uh, average of the total promoters. And the transcription start site is here, and there is a high signal in the uh, proximal promoter region of the score, but the high score continues downstream of the DSS. So this is different from the situation of a lab offices. And, and then uh, we uh, compared uh, between promoter types. Uh, so normal promoters are called genic top type. So uh, usually one gene contains uh, multiple promoters. So in the case of Arabidopsis, there are uh, three promoters uh, in average, and one has the highest uh, activity. So that's called uh, genic top promoters. Yeah. Uh, and also uh, there are, there are uh, promoters within the transcribed region or a uh, translated region. So this is called intragenic promoters. So, uh, so if, if you compare uh, uh, to PRI uh, profiles of genic top type and also intragenic type, uh, you can see a big difference. And here, uh, PRI, uh, there, there is no positive signal. So zero is here. So this, they are uh, all negative values. So uh, this uh, suggests uh, this intragenic promoter has no promoter context. And in addition, uh, there are also uh, antisense promoters and also uh, orphan type promoters. So in this case, there is no gene model reported uh, downstream of the uh, TSS. So TSS is present, uh, and this is identified by experimental analysis, but uh, uh, no reported genes come downstream. And the genic promoters are two types, top promoters and also companion genic promoters. So uh, they are the uh, results of uh, uh, TSS prediction. And uh, uh, to, in the case of Arabidopsis and also lice, uh, genic top type the, has the highest uh, prediction score, and the other type has lower, uh, much lower uh, score of prediction. So uh, this, this, this result suggests uh, only uh, genic top type contains a, a precise uh, promoter context, and the other types of promoters doesn't have it. And so then uh, we checked uh, which sequence contribute to the uh, PRI score. So uh, each octama sequence uh, is represented as a dot, and the anabidopsis score is a uh, horizontal, and the score, lice PRI score is a vertical. Uh, so one sequence comes to one point. So as a, as a whole, uh, there is a, a very weak uh, correlation between arabidopsis and lice. And uh, in the case of a uh, core promoter element, uh, there is no uh, positive contribution to the uh, PRI scores. And uh, this one, Uh, this is also a core element, but uh, no uh, clear relationship. Uh, so this is a regulatory sequences, and uh, uh, so Arabidopsis sequence has blue, is blue, and the uh, regulatory sequence is uh, yellow. 
and the common sequence between Arab races and rice are uh, uh, red. So as you can see, uh, so regulatory sequence has a positive contribution to the PRI score. And this is a spacer sequence of Arab races. And uh, uh, so some of them have positive uh, effects on the score, but some has no uh, positive effect. So this says uh, some of the uh, space sequence has positive, positive contribution to the PLR score. Then as uh, so we compared with the uh, established uh, machine learning methodology, uh, which is a TSS plant uh, reported in 2017, and so, so this is a, a, a harmonic means. Uh, it's an average uh, of like accuracy and sensitivity. So if you look at here, and so promoter index, uh, our method has uh, always higher uh, score than the uh, TSS plan. This is a labrosis and this is rice. So rice has a lower prediction, uh, but uh, uh, still uh, ours are higher than the TSS plan. And the TSS plan uh, is a, a machine learning methodology. And this uh, so method uh, focus on the uh, 100 basis around uh, TSS. So uh, if we uh, reduce the uh, uh, range uh, like to uh, like 20 or 40 basis, uh, I think we can combine uh, our method and this uh, local uh, prediction methodology. Okay, this is a summary. And uh, we establishment of a uh, evaluation system for uh, middle lens. Uh, uh, this means uh, one KB region is evaluated for the uh, uh, to promoter context. <laughs> and uh, the, our method is independent of the core elements. So this is what we wanted to have. And TSS prediction is succeeded. Uh, this is not pinpointed, but uh, as a uh, middle range uh, prediction was very successful. <laughs> and then uh, so po positive contributors to PRI are regulatory sequences and some of the spacers. And uh, the promoter context was found only in uh, genic top type promoters and, and the other types of promoter has low PRI. And they, this uh, resulted in a uh, failure of the prediction. And because uh, uh, our score has some correlation with the expression level, uh, there is a possible uh, application for the evaluation of promoter uh, maturity uh, of this methodology. Uh, thank you very much for the attention. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Yossi, for the very interesting uh, presentation, especially uh, working with uh, uh, codomain sequence and promoter uh, region. Yeah. Uh, now we going to the question and answer session. Yeah. Uh, we invite the question from the audience first. Is there any question? Yeah. Uh, please introduce your name and your institution. Uh, my name is Zia Tabrula. Uh, I want to ask a question. Uh, from? From undergraduate biology student. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, first, uh, I want to ask uh, 
what is the meaning of promotor maturation? And uh, and can you uh, give me an example of how researcher uh, apa, find a new type of promoter, uh, new type of core promoter? Uh, Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Thanks. In, in evolution, uh, sometimes new promoters appear. So that happens like a, a horizontal gene transfer from uh, chloroplast to the nucleus. So they have no, the, the gene has no promoters, but the, they have coding regions. So, uh, after uh, horizontal gene transfer, uh, one, one story <laughs> says that uh, uh, neighboring a uh, weak promoter is uh, caught. And then uh, so during the evolution, the, uh, such, such a weak promoter uh, grows and uh, uh, have stronger activity and more stable uh, gene sequence in the evolution. So that's a, uh, so after uh, stabilization, we call it a mature promoter. Uh, to, so to find to find a new promoters, uh, finding a new genes is a good way. So, it, uh, for example, you compare uh, several genomes in, uh, in a genus or family. So some specific uh, species has a new gene you can find. The upstream region is a new promoter. Okay, uh, you get the answer? What's your answer? Uh, and how you, uh, researcher uh, know that the that core promoter is a new type for specific Yes. How you determine that this this co promoter is specific? I see. Uh, to the pata box uh, type core element distributes within the uh, eukaryote. But the, uh, we, we found that GA uh, element is specific to plants. Uh, to, there is a difference in the function. Uh, to, the tata type is often found in the regulated gene. And GA type found in the uh, constitutively expressed gene. So the load would be different. And then <laughs> a human and mouse has a different type of constitutive for core promoter. Uh, 
diverse insights that you can show to come back and see the other side. Um, so Yeah, but that is just the hypothesis. Sensei, maybe I can add yeah. to explain the the answer. I think uh, his question is how scientists know that this GC or something uh, is called new 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 core from new core promoter. How? How you know that that one is a new one? I think I think I think we uh, if we find something like you said that we we found Gichi or something promoter that actually before we never found that so we can compare it with the data in in CBS or something like that maybe maybe something like that I just want to try to answer <laughs> his question. Thank you. So, so your question is uh, how we uh, accept the new uh, core item. Yeah, something like that. How, how we know that this is new mm. core promoter. I see. So in that meaning, uh, experimental uh, validation is necessary. Mm. <laughs> Jadi, emang nggak bisa. Kalau memang belum ada ya, just dicek lagi. Kita akhirnya tahu. Oke, okay, uh, thank you for your answer. I got that answer. Oke, okay, thank you. Is there any other question? Ya. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, my name is Ahmad Eka Satria. And I'm uh, a student from Department of Biology. Uh, thank you so much for the excellent and insightful presentation. Um, it is such an amazing feat to be able to, um, you know, discover a new promoter and its evaluation evaluation system. Um, but my question is pretty simple: that I want to ask whether or not the discovery of a new promoter um, or information or the insight from this presentation is applicable to more. Practical use such as biotechnology. Thank you. So the question? The question is whether or not the information or the insight that we get from this presentation is applicable to a more practical use such as biotechnology. Yeah, uh, so. Yeah, our, our invention is a, a strategy. So uh applicable to uh, various uh, species and uh, biotechnology so so now uh, i belongs to uh, agricultural uh, department so so we handle uh, many uh, cultivars so so if you want to see a difference of cultivars uh, so just looking at sequence is easy, but the uh, experimental uh, support is uh, di difficult. Uh, so, so if uh, we can substitute uh, experimental analysis to uh, computational uh, prediction, uh, that reduces our efforts. Okay, uh, maybe one or oh, there are yeah, other question, maybe. Wait, is it? No fun. Um, thank you so much, uh, Professor Yamamoto for the inspiring presentation. Uh, first of all, I am Fathan Mubina, an undergraduate student from uh, Department of Biology, University of Indonesia. So uh, from what I've learned as an undergraduate, uh, there are mechanisms that could stop the transcription 
uh, such as uh, determination that usually occur in uh, a while transcription is help or already begin uh, uh, about the promoter. Uh, I want to ask, uh, what if one of the sequence in the promoter region is altered, like deleted or added by some base pairs? Uh, how does it affect the TSS prediction and could it make the maybe a transcription discontinued? Uh, I think that's all. Thank you. Any question? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Can you <laughs> replay the question? Eh? Too, oh, okay. too, too fast. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my question is what if one of the sequence in the promoter uh, region is altered, like uh, one of the circuits is deleted or added by some base pairs, and how does it affect the TSS prediction? Uh, maybe can it uh, discontinue the transcription? Uh, I think that's all. Thank you. <laughs> so can, can you repeat the first question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, so the uh, the score is applicable to the genome sequence. So yeah, the, he, that, his question uh, is if we delete or add sequence to the core promoter, mm -hmm. so will it give effect to the transcript or the expression of yeah, the that, that would regulatory. affect the uh, actual uh, transcriptional activity, but to our prediction, no effect. Uh, so the answer can can give effect, or there is no effect at all. Something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it means that we must do experiment to find out the answer. I think like that. Yes, yeah, so the introduced methodology just evaluates the uh, uh, long range, uh, I mean, middle range uh, mm. area, uh, which is 1 kb basis. Mm. And we don't look at uh, core elements. So that's avoided for the examination. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he has a second question. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the well, answer. Maybe my question. Uh, what about the P PRI index? PRI index, uh, is it applicable for the others in general? So. Yeah, so we have prepared uh, using anabdopsis and the lice genome information. So species close to them uh, can be directly uh, applied. And for the uh, distant uh, plant species, uh, we have to prepare new uh, table. The last question: What about the uh, what tool of bioinformatics regarding the uh, algorithm that you use in your uh, research and studies? Yeah, we we just count it <laughs> and and divide it. Yeah, no, not not difficult algorithm. Yeah, I submitted our uh, uh, script to uh, GitHub. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, is there any question from mathematics student? <laughs> uh. I bring my student. This is the first time they know uh, bioinformatics. I think it's quite complicated <laughs> <laughs> because uh, this is in the in the field. Uh, 
because the the speaker is from biologist <laughs> so it's much biologist than we are expected <laughs> okay <laughs> okay i think uh, we run out of the of the time and we are very uh uh, uh very happy with that we get a, a new perspective especially for our uh our audience here we come from uh, mathematics department uh, chemistry and also biology so uh, bioinformatics is a multidiscipline <laughs> field so we have uh, bioinformatics in the department of mathematics bioinformatics in the department of chemistry and also in the department of biology so we have a uh, different different uh, uh, angle but at least uh, we know each other now and we hope this is one of the starting point to collaborate, especially in our faculty, uh, that uh, the SATA project is one of the triggering uh, stepping stone for us now to get uh, collaborate. So, yeah. I think we get, uh, uh, we get run out of the time. And, uh, please uh, uh, give a big applause to Professor Yasu. Thank you very much. And now we uh, give this session back to the uh, MC. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Bapak Profesor Al Hadi, Dr. Yuko Makita, and Professor Yoshiharu Yamamoto for the inspiring and insightful presentation and discussion. The Faculty of Metabendics and Natural Science would like to present token of appreciation to both of you. To present the token to Dr. Yuko Makita, we kindly invite Bapak Dede Juhana as the Dean of Faculty of Metabendics and Natural Science Universitas Indonesia. To Bapak Dede Juhana and Dr. Yuko Makita, please proceed to in front of the stage. Let's give a big applause for Dr. Yuko Makita. Thank you very much. And now to present the token of appreciation to Professor Yoshiharu Yamamoto, we would like to invite Bapak Dr. Dipo Aldila SSE MSE as the Manager of Research and Community Service. To Bapak Dipo and Professor Yoshiharu Yamamoto, please proceed to in front of the stage. Once again, let's give a big applause for the honorable moderator and keynote speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the end of the eighth seminar MIPA Talk Series Season 3 2022. I am Azipanya Karolin Siringoringo as the master of ceremony of this event. On behalf of the host and committee, would like to express our most sincere appreciation and gratitude for your participation. Please forgive us for any shortcomings from our side. We wish you safety and health, and we'll see you again in next MIPA Talk Series. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.